everybody, it's Juliet here. Welcome back. Um, I'm sorry I've been absent for a couple weeks. Um, I was evacuated due to the Woolsey fire and that threw the first week completely off whack as you might imagine. And then um, last week I was just trying to uh, kind of get back to normal. Um, all the kids are off school because all the schools need a deep clean and they all some of them need like restoration from smoke damage and so the kids were off school for two weeks so I've just not had as much time as usual to do my weekly video anyway here we are we're back so this week I've got a good one for beginners it's a it's very simple but it's very effective um, these are what I call honeycomb my honeycomb beaded earrings and I made those first and then I thought, oh, this would make a really cute pendant. So what you see here, this is actually an earring finding at the top that I have bent, um, made it into a bale and just cut it because I had these cute little earring findings and I wanted it to match with the earrings. So um, I just want to encourage you when you're making jewelry you don't always have to use things for what they are made for you don't know so an earring finding could become something else so these are the findings that i used um obviously you don't have to do this this way if you don't want to but i'm just showing you that you can you can do things with um you know things like earrings that you might not have thought of doing so these are a little bit tarnished because I made them about nine or ten months ago. Then I can just give them a little polish up with that. Um, so these earrings, I think I got them, oh yeah, I got them at Fire Mountain Gems. This is the item number H20B3158FN. Um, if you want these same ones, that's where I got them. I, I believe they still have them. I think it's a regular stock item. Um, then I, these are the hex, I think they're called hex beads or maybe they're called honeycomb beads, I don't know. And I picked, a, I don't know what this colorway is called. This is actually about three strands, I think. And I'm going to be completely honest, I cannot remember where I bought these because I did buy them months and months and months ago. But as you can see, they're um, all different colors, uh, like the finish of them. And actually, I might have got these from Art Beads. I, I really don't know. And then I'm using um, just some like honey colored... Uh, 11 o beads and these are Miyuki. I think if you type in honey or amber um, these actually have a little bit like of a matte finish on them I guess um, but obviously you can do whatever color you want you don't have to use the same colors as me so let me just clear this out of the way and we'll get started okay so um, I forgot to mention that I am using the crystal fire line in the six pound size D, 0 0.008 diameter. Um, you can use whatever matches with your beads, but I use the white on here and I can't really see it um, at all. So I'm just gonna use the, or the crystal, so I'm just gonna use that. So I've selected from all the beads four that are different colors because I think it looks kind of pretty to have um, different colors and I'm just gonna see how I'm gonna want them arranged um, do I want them that way or do I want them maybe I'll separate those two because they're cooler colors and those are warmer colors let's see how that looks yeah I like that I think I like that okay so we're gonna do it in that way so what we're going to do is we're going to pick up, um, we, I've got about three feet, I guess, maybe two and a, two and three quarters feet 
of Fireline on my beading needle. So I'm just going to pick up the one of the beads that I want at the bottom, then the side bead, then the top bead, and I'm going to push all that down so that I've got like a six inch tail. Um, so it's going to be like this. And then I'm going to pick up three of the seed beads. Okay. And I'm going to go into the hole of this, the opposite hole. So if I'm coming out here, I'm going in the one next to it so that it's like parallel to what I had to begin with. And then I'm going to, hang on, this is, see this is already wanting to turn. Okay, I'm going to pick up the fourth bead, then I'm skipping that red bead, and I'm going to go into the second hole of this greenish brown bead. <laughs> And it should all, oh, that's got twisted, there we go, there we go. So that's going to be my layout. So I am now going to pick up, just like I did at the other end, three of the seed beads. And I'm going to go all the way back through again on the opposite side from where I'm coming out. Oh, now I'm coming out of the wrong bead. Okay, I ju you just want to go through just the hexagon beads. Okay, there we go. So we've now got the top and the bottom in place. So coming out here, we're going to pick up four beads. So four, and you're going to go down into the side hole here, okay? We're in the side hole. We're going to pick up four more. And we're going to go through the same hole again. So I'm coming out the bottom here is focusing this week kind of okay and we're gonna go back in the top again so we have it just like that on the side and we're gonna pick up four more oh my goodness my belly is like grumbling all right then we're just gonna go through our three little seed beads at the top here and I'm just gonna flip it over so you can see what I'm doing. And I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> there we go. So again, we're gonna pick up four. One, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four. Down through the side hole. We're gonna pick up four more. Going to go again through the same hole, just like that, and we're going to pick up four more, and we're going to go through the top three beads. Okay, so I've gone through the top three middle beads there. I'm going to go through one extra bead.
which is the one that's coming out from here. Now we're going to make a corner here, so we're going to add one extra bead. And we're going to go just through the next one bead. Okay. So that's kind of made a point at that corner. Now we're going to skip this guy because we want him to go in that way. So we're going to skip him and we're going to just go through this bead and this bead. So we're going to go through two beads. Not three, like my needle wants to do. Just two. Okay, so we're going through the next two beads. So we're skipping that one there. And now what you want to do is make sure that your thread stays outside so that he gets pushed inwards. See how that kind of pushed him in right there? Okay, so now we're going to pick up one and we're going to go through two more beads. So that's made kind of a point right there. We're going to go pick up one more and go through two beads. Just like that. Now, remember how we skipped this guy? We're going to skip this guy right here. We're going to go through one bead. And just kind of make sure that he gets pushed into the corner. Then we're going to pick up our corner bead here. And we're going to go through the next three beads. So this is the very, very middle bead right here, just so you know. Okay, so try and get that guy where he's supposed to go. We're now going to go through two beads. And we're going to put the opposite corner on. So just pick up one and go through just the very next bead. Just one. And then we have to get this guy to go in. So we're going to go through, so we're going to skip him and we're going to go through the next two beads. like that. And I'm going to try and keep my thread out to the outside so that he gets forced in. Now we're going to pick up our corner bead and go through two. We're going to pick up another corner bead and go through the next two. Then we're going to skip this one to get him to go in and we're just going to go through one bead. So you skip one and go through the next one. get him pushed in. You can, if you pull your thread up, it helps push him in a little bit. And then our last corner bead here, we're just going to do that. So pick up one and go through the next two beads. 
Okay, so now I have to decide which way up I want it to go. Um, I think I want this bit to be the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this point just to help uh, this middle bead here, just to kind of help it stick out a little so it looks more like a point. And I'm going to work my way up to the other middle. So that kind of helps it a little bit to poke out. Right, so just work your way through. You might want to skip the corners, but you don't have to. I'm not going to because I like having whoop, threads through the beads. But what I'm not doing is I am not pulling really, really tight or anything because I don't want to mess up the, the corner. Come on. get down to the other end and if I were you I would just go all the way around the outside at least once just to reinforce actually we can do that while we're putting our um, bale section on so okay see right here this doesn't want to stay in so I might skip that one again just to Actually, no, I'm just going to sew through it because I don't want it to be loose. Okay. Alright, so I'm back down to I'm back at the bottom, so I'm going to go through that one, that one, and come out the middle. Okay, just like that. Alright, so now we're going to put um, the top part on, if I show you here. So it's just got a loop, um, which is actually a pentagon, so I'll show you how I did that. So we're going to pick up five of our seed beads. So five, and you're going to go through the same bead again. Then, oop, you're going to go through the first bead that you just added. You're going to pick up one, and you're going to go through the next bead. Hang on. Is not sitting correctly because that one should be sticking out a little bit. There we go. So we're going to add up one between each of these to get it into a pentagon shape. Last one. And through the final. So on the last one, you go through the last one of the pentagon and then through the point. Okay, so it should look like that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way around. I'm going to go up through all of these to reinforce. And then we're going to tie it off. I'm not going to make you watch me do going all the way around. I'll come back for the tying off. Okay, so I've gone all the way around um, from where we were. Right the way around the whole thing and looped around here. And I'm just coming out the very top again. Um, and I really don't think I can make any more passes through that top bead. It is really tight now. So, 
Uh, okay, so we're going to tie this off. So just go through the next three beads till you get to one of the corners. And then put your needle under the corner and then through the loop and pull. And just pull the knot into that corner. Then we're just going to go through till, reach, till we reach down to the next corner down here. If you pull that, the knot should disappear into the, into the beadwork. do exactly the same. So we go through and then we sew through the loop and we pull the knot and then just come out of the next corner. Pull that nice and snug and then you can just snip it off or use your thread burner or whatever your method of cutting is. So that's that. Um, hmm, far too much thread. Maybe only use one and a half, 18 inches or so. Okay, so now we need to tie in the tail. So what we're going to do, hang on, I'm going to have to snip that off because that's a bit ragged right there. No way I'm going to be able to thread that. Alright, I'll come back in a second, hang on. Okay, I finally got my needle threaded. It only took me like five minutes. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it didn't take that long. Um, okay. So yeah, we're coming out of this hex bead here. So what we're going to do is we're going to count from the middle, one, two, and then go into, so including the middle, remember how we started with three beads here? So we're going to go into this bead because there's already a thread there that comes out. Oh boy, if I can even get in there. Can't see what I'm doing. It's so dark. Okay. I'm just going blind. I've done so much beading the last few days. I had a big sale. Um, not even a sale. I, well, it kind of was a sale. Um, and I've got all these Christmas orders. And it's just been a bit crazy. Okay. So I've reached a corner, we're going to do exactly the same thing. Um, my thread's quite short here, so if I just keep that twisted and I'm just going to poke through the end of my needle and then I can control it by pulling gently backwards and then um, go through the next beads until you get to the corner. Can be a bit tight because we've made a lot of passes through at this point. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more knot. I like to always do at least two, sometimes three. And then we're just gonna work our way down to the next corner and cut our thread. And I will show you how I made the earring into a bale and how to attach it to your um, to your honeycomb. Right, so you need some, let's just 
just move this out of the way. And let me get my flush cutters. And I'm also going to get, all right, so I've got my round nose pliers, I've got my crimping pliers, and I've got my flush cutters. So, looking at this earring, I'm going to first, where the motif stops right here, I'm going to bend it forward. So I'm actually going to just put the very end of my little round nose because I do want a little flat area. If you look here, you'll see you need to twist the wire around it. So you are going to need just a little bit of room for that. And I'm just going to fold this upwards towards me. Just like that. Okay, so it's made an angle. Then I'm going to, about here, Take this, and I'm going to start rounding, okay, and I'm going to take my flesh cutters, and I'm just going to cut where I started rounding, because it's better to cut on a curve, because you'll never get, with the end of your pliers, you'll never, you'll always have a little straight bit, unless you've started curving it first. So whenever you can, always start your curve, then cut off the excess. Oh, I was going to twist it. Oops. Okay, well, I'm not going to twist it on this one, obviously. <laughs> um, then I'm just going to make a little loop. Like that. doesn't look as nice. Right, I, what I should have done was twisted it down and around so that it was sticking out this way and then twisted it and then cut it and then I would kind of crimp it with my crimps just to make it really nice and rounded. I just was not even thinking what I was doing. So it should look really clean um, like that. So yeah, I basically took my round nose and I wound it round twice and then snipped it and then crimped it so it's nice and rounded. And then I put the chain on um, and that's all I did. I, I'm using an 18 inch chain and it's this is really nice. I really like to wear this necklace. Um, so the way you put this bit on to the necklace is you get your pliers, you twist this to the side, just like that, and this can be tricky because this thing's in the way, and then you have to try and, yeah, you might need to pull it a little bit out. I know normally you don't want to do that, but on this, you may have to pull it a little bit out just to get the bead in. And then twist it back and push it in at the same time, just like that. And then it sits very nicely. You can imagine. There you go. And I just think it gives it a little bit of something at the top um, to kind of draw the eye down to the, to the piece. So that's it. Um, next week, I think I'm going to show you, I've got a pattern for this that I think is on my um, Etsy store. It's only like $2 or $2.50 or something. I'll drop a link. Um, but we're going to make these little bee earrings to go with our honeycomb. Um, so this is what we're going to do next week. So tune in then. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already. And thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Get lots of beading done. And I'll see you then. Bye.